Okay. Carly, you might want to just go into um, participants, click on more next to you, next to um, uh, my name at, um, next to you and put in your name. Okay. Okay. Um, well, anyway. I'll work on that. Okay, it's uh, it's ten oh five, and I suggest we bring the uh, the uh, the meeting to order. Uh, first item on the agenda is minutes of previous meetings, and we have two. So, are there any comments, corrections, additions, deletions for the uh, minutes for the August twenty seven uh, special board meeting? Okay. Are there any of the same for the September 14th, 2021 board meeting? Okay. Hearing none, I'll entertain a, a motion to uh, accept the minutes for the August 27th special board meeting and the September 14th regular board meeting at this time. This is Danny Law, and I'll, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Marcia a second. Marion. Marcia Marion, I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion on the table in a second. Uh, any further comments? Hearing none, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any, any opposed nay? Uh, the motion carries. Next is uh, comments or concerns of any person present today. Uh, I think we have Bonnie and that's it right now. No. Okay. I I have a comment. Yes. Uh, I can't seem to figure out how to get myself in as a participant and given what we're doing today, usually I wouldn't care that much, but Given what we're doing and the fact we're being recorded, I might want to ask Bob if there's something I can do, or maybe he can send me uh, an invite or something like that again. Yeah, you know, uh, Carl, I do. I send the when I populate the Zoom calendar, it automatically sends invites to each board member. It goes to your email to you know hey, everyone. Bob, I got it. I just can't find it. That's yeah. been the problem. I so could, what I'm asking is, can you send me one now? Carla, do you see the three dot on the screen on, next to you? I think you just click on that and rename. Three dots next to the screen. See if you put hover on your screen. It's a blue square on the top right hand corner with the three dots. Uh, nope, don't see it. <laughs> on your video. Right by your picture. Yeah. My picture's not up. Oh, my picture is... By your face. If you put your cursor on the picture, the three dots will appear in the upper right-hand corner. No, there's nothing up there about... Bob, can you rename her as administrator? I, uh... There's a rename option. If you see that, Carla, maybe you can use that. Yeah. I've got participant share screen, record, raise hand, and question and answers. So oh, she's probably got a different menu. Click yeah. on participant. Okay, hang on. Rename Carla Fox. Okay. There you go. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but I, I don't know what there you go means. Well, my picture now shows you with Carla Fox in the lower left-hand corner. It does? Right next to Bonnie Stewart. And okay, and well, and mine doesn't, but if you can, if I'm being recorded, usually I wouldn't care except for that one 
you know, case I want to make sure I get recorded on, I guess. Okay. There's I can see that, everybody except me. My video shows your proper name now. Okay, great. We're done. I'm sorry <laughs> to interrupt. I'm sorry, John. I hijacked the meeting. I don't. Yep. Moving on, uh, we have uh, old business legislative update, uh, Frank. Yes, um, just let the uh, board know that the, um, the it was part of the DCP's uh, legislation, uh, well, yeah, legisla legislation for the upcoming session. They are going to add chapter 389 to, to, as an exception to the, um, the, the new, um, continuing education year statute that was changing all of the continuing education years for every um, for every credential that DCP oversees to starting and ending three months prior to the real renewal date. They're going to now make um, the, the CPA CPE year a, an exception to that, so that um, once this if this passes and hopefully will then um, the year will continue to be the July 1st to June 30th year that it has been. Good. And that would not affect, if that does happen, um, then it should not affect anything because this year we're, we're, we're continuing with the old, well, you know, the, the, the July to June year. And then if this gets passed, then it would still be in place for the next renewal a year from now. So, um, you know, it would just almost be transparent to everybody, except for us who had to try to get it changed. Okay, is that it? That's it. Okay, next, uh, the NASPA annual meeting. Uh, let's see, I attended uh, virtually, I believe Frank attended uh, various sections virtually. Uh, and uh, I saw Bonnie on the uh, the list as, uh, as, as attending, there's a, uh, a couple of things that uh, um, that I, I, I noted. Uh, uh, one thing that's not that important is, is there was a lot of emphasis on the fact when they were talking about the new exam, that the exam is focused solely on protection of the public. It is not intended to be a diploma, i.e. a uh, uh, something where somebody would just take to show that they were an expert on something. Um, but most of the discussion to me was based on the transition, which is, I think is going to be highly, um, in, in some respects, very difficult, how you're going to transition from one exam to the other when people are, are part way through on, on one method and, and, and have to finish on the other method. Um, they're putting out a, they're coming up with a lot of guidance on what will qualify in uh, education and coursework as uh, data analytics. Uh, they did, however, also say, and I think Carla would bounce back this up for, uh, for UConn, that uh, generally uh, academia has, uh, has responded pretty thoroughly on uh, providing and were actually in the course of providing a lot of, uh, of education and data analytics, uh, even before this, uh, there are some areas in the country that are, that are going to have a problem. Uh, there's a lot going on with peer review oversight and people trying to uh, ramp back up uh, uh, peer review oversight committees. Um, one thing that I thought was very interesting was in their legislative follow-up, they talked a lot about the never, never to disappear uh, North Carolina tooth whitening case. Um, yeah. And what is, what is developed from that as to uh, what attributes boards have to have uh, to be a, uh, to be appropriate or be able to, to rule on various things. And, it was very interesting because, you know, can it be reversed? Uh, there is no, it's not dominated by, by active participants. You've got public members. Uh, you've got, it can be reversed by other state agencies, et cetera, as appropriate. Um, 
Connecticut hit every box. Uh, we don't have, for those worried about tooth whitening in, uh, in Connecticut, it's, it's not, uh, not an issue. Uh, unfortunately, the, the, the most value of it was in the last uh, um, uh, administrators and chairs meeting on the second day and on the first day, the regional meetings. Uh, but on the regional meetings, they had everybody sign into the same place and then they distributed you into the various regional rooms. As a result, if you lost power for about a minute, which I did, which knocked you off the internet and you went right back into the internet, you couldn't get back into your meeting because you just ended up in an empty, uh, empty distribution room with three other people who had something happen. Um, and, and that's about it, except that there is another DOL audit review coming down. Uh, there's apparently concern once again about the quality of DOL audits. And we were just warned that there is a possibility that uh, we and I believe the state board's ethics will see some activity, perhaps, we really don't know. And there's also going to another focus on, uh, on single audits. And, and that's really it. Um, you might have a lot more on that, Bonnie, but I, I, I thought except for like three separate sections, it was mostly detailed update on projects that were in process. Okay. Uh, did you have any, any comments, Frank? No, unfortunately I was not able to, um, to, to, log into it on either of the days but i so i'm, I'm gonna I, you know i know they record everything and i will go back yeah. and look at the right sessions that are you know that, that i feel are relevant to us so I, I will take a look but i just haven't had a chance yet okay uh, next item is alternative experience um and i think frank will probably have a few other comments uh on that um the you remember the gentleman I can't remember the name who had requested a waiver for alternative experience for the CPA exam, and he did not fit our requirements, and we did not uh, grant the uh, the waiver. He has asked, and he has not gotten in touch with me. He has asked at some point to make his case that those uh, requirements be changed. Um, and uh, we put that on here in case he actually had and uh, was uh, going to make his case, but I have not uh, heard from him at this point. Um, but if everybody could keep that in mind for the next uh, full meeting, it in case it does come up from discussion, uh, the reason I noted that uh, um, from the 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 NASBA annual meeting that they kept emphasizing that the CPA was purely meant the testing and the designation for protection of the public for specific purposes and not meant as a, an other credential or a diploma. Uh, it does seem to be that this particular issue has been raised elsewhere, mm. particularly with the, uh, with the different, uh, the different, the new exam, uh, et cetera. So if anybody has any thoughts, they're welcome, but otherwise I would put that off until um, it became necessary, but wanted to give people an, a heads up that uh, we might be discussing that in the future. Uh, extension waiver requests. Oh, oh. Excuse me, John, I, I actually, on yes. alternative experience, I don't have a, any comments on, it was David Katz um, on his request yet. However, um, this kind of, this, I do have another item that fits in with that, I believe. And I, I uh, was contacted last week by Brian Riley, who is the president of the Connecticut Society of CPAs. And he's also um, at Travelers Insurance and just full disclosure, my wife just, um, retired from there, although not from his area. I don't, and I, I don't believe they know each other, knew each other. Um, but he was saying that 
Travelers has what they call the Financial Leadership Development Program. And he was hoping that it's a two, it's a two or three year program that the people there um, undergo. And what he was hoping to do was that there are a number of uh, current employees, managers or above who are CPAs or could get their um, CPA um, certificates uh, officially registered and all so they could sign off an experience. But he was hoping that the um, this program would, I and mean, he did send me some samples of it. I, I don't want to board, you know, have people go over it now, but I guess my question is for something, his, 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 his thought was, hey, you know, this is a way to get more people into the pipeline. And because uh, he said they have a number of, of, of accounting majors who they who are working for them and you know if they obviously if they had they have to go through all of the the, the different um, steps with the exam etc but they're he's hoping that, that this might be a way to get experience so i guess so really my question at this point is is there a way to have the you know um programs like this um vetted i don't know i don't, I don't know that's not really where but just you know, some some way to to, 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 to for us to look at this and say yes, this would be a way to get experience. Um, well, yeah, I, I, that's a good question. I I I think that we should be open to hearing a case made. I presume you're probably aware of this too, Bonnie, since it's your president that's done it. Uh, it's interesting. Yes, we've um, we've had a number of good people that are going through their their program in turn with the society as well. So it's pretty elaborate. Um, I do think it's worth looking at um, and definitely consideration. Uh, Brian, prior to becoming the chief auditor at Travelers, had been um, a partner with Arthur Anderson, so understands the regiment that everyone goes through when they first. Um, are out of school, the experience they need to gain, et cetera. And they do have quite a few CPAs on, on staff there, uh, but they are recruiting heavily directly from the schools and being able to um, give those new employees the opportunity to become uh, CPAs, I think is great. Um, I think that if you did have concern with some aspect of their program, they would modify it, but Travelers does take their training pretty seriously, which is why we've got the Travelers Institute here in Connecticut. Um, so definitely think it's worth worth your um, exploring. Yeah. Are, are these individuals being... Uh, sorry, I have no idea where that is coming from. Uh, are these individuals being recruited into uh, um, internal audit? Just... Yes, actually, the, um, they're not just an internal audit, uh, but a number of them are. So actually, the person that we had working for us part-time um, from UConn was part of Traveler's Internal Audit Program. I do think that they rotate people as well, so they give people the opportunity to experience the different departments, um, but internal audit is definitely one of them. Well, first thing, let me... Uh note and uh, there that uh, uh, Martha has been able to join us. So that was several minutes ago. So if we could just note that, because I didn't know whether you could see her down there in a little picture down the corner. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, I had an uh, eye doctor appointment that I had to go to. So I, I know that it's an important meeting. Understood. So I want to make sure out here. So I apologize for being late. Okay. No, understood. Um, I know in the past, that there have been several large corporations that had gotten specific approval for their programs. Uh, and I don't know, it's, it's so long ago, I'm talking about like the 90s. Um, I don't know what, uh, how that was done or, or anything. And so that's, I mean, I guess that's something we can consider with the whole thing. But, but somebody will have to make a, I think, a case. Any other comments? Too much of the comments have been me. I'll, I'll jump in, John, and say that the, the notion of this program, I'm, I'm on board for it as long as it's under the 
the, the, the guides of uh, CPA guiding them. Um, I do know of, as you said, some programs, I, I do know of um, individuals who became CPAs through working um, through an internal audit department of um, from, from Fortune 500 corporations. So if they have a solid program set up and they present it to us, I have, I have no problem um, with us touting that this is another avenue to, um, to become a CPA. I'll, I'll continue to have a problem if it's someone who says, well, I've worked 30 years in corporate accounting with no, with no CPA backing me up. But um, any, anybody else, I'm definitely on board for this. Is an internal audit already a, a way to get there that's not considered alternative experience? That's my understanding, yes. 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 I think this is, 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 a, is a broader program okay. that may include internal audit, but wouldn't be all, all internal audit. But I don't know. It hasn't been presented. <laughs> yeah. I, I, Tim, I'll just add, you know, I'm, I'm supportive of looking into that. It's just a packaged program of experience and until you kind of roll back the the program details and understanding mm -hmm. what does it really mean how does it compare to our current uh, requirements uh you, you know you can't really make a judgment call so right. i'd say certainly let's explore it um and just make sure we understand what's uh you know what that program entails who's supervising the people uh what areas of accounting, audit, et cetera, are they touching and how's that compared to our, our, uh, our current rules? Right. Uh, interestingly, one of the big items in the, uh, at the NASBA conference, which I didn't note is uh, pipeline problems. The number of people um, wishing to go into public accounting has been going down and uh, for various reasons. Uh, most of which I think uh, had to do with uh, compensation or perceived compensation. Any other comments? I, I, uh, so it would be okay if I forwarded what I had to the board members to just start taking a look at this. How, how would, could I tell Mr. Riley as far as what we're trying what, what, what the board's looking at or considering or how would he want to proceed at least? Well, what's the sense of the board? I, I, I think it'd be appropriate to forward it. Okay. All right. Great. 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 Thank you. Okay. One thing I'll be glad to get off uh, Zoom meetings and go back in person so I don't have to keep going back and forth to the documents and screens. <clears throat> okay, now on to extension waiver request. Okay, thank you. We have, yeah, we have the, uh, the one that's on the agenda is Natalie Olmstead, who um, was actually before the board last meeting and the board asked to ta table her request so that um, she could provide additional information. I do have that. Um, we have since received four other requests. These are all for um, continuing education extensions or in one case, a waiver. Um, but would you like me to go to Ms. Olmstead first and then- Let's go to Ms. Olmstead first. And do we have to- uh, pass do, You would have to, to vote for, the others? use a two thirds vote to put the others in there, yes. Okay. Um, but, okay, so Natalie Olmstead, she was looking for an extension of her, um, the, the, the BEC portion. It, uh, and actually one of the questions we had was when it expires, and because she was at looking for an extension to May of 2022. And that was, the request was based on, I guess the, um, an, an extension that were, that um, everything between August 1st, 2020 and August, September 30th, 2021 were automatically extended until December 30th, 2021. And so she was looking for another five months. Um, and uh, right, so that, that's what she was asking for. And then we, the other questions, well, let me just back up. So she, this is what she submitted last time, just so you can get, get an idea. It's November, 2019, she began studying, studying for the BEC. January, 2020 took that exam and passed. March, 2020 took the audit exam and failed. March to July, 2020 began studying for the regulation 
portion scheduled the exam, which was then canceled several times due to COVID shutdown and the closing of the test centers. September of 2020, began working full time as an audit associate at um, PricewaterhouseCoopers. Immediately was assigned as on a client with an October busy season and other projects that resulted in working busy season hours until February 2021. In November 2020, she had a health care issue that she did provide evidence for. February 2021, began studying again for the audit exam. In March of 2021, she had a different healthcare issue. She did provide evidence of that, which delayed her progress on studying for audit due to her symptoms. August 2021 to March 2021, she resumed studying. June 2021, sat for the audit and failed, audit exam and failed, did so again in July. August 2021, sat for the FAR and failed. Currently studying to retake that one for the beginning of September. This is obviously for her last request. In between the start of my studies in November 2019 and starting full time at uh, PWC September 2020, I worked as a pharmacy technician at CVS, faced challenges due to fear and unpredictability of the pandemic, took on an increasing number of hours at the pharmacy, which later Further impeded, which further impeded my progress on the exams in combination with the testing center closures. The COVID-19 pandemic has had a significant impact on everyone's lives. I am confidently, I can confidently say that without the challenges and setbacks faced due to the pandemic and other medical interruptions, I would have been able to successfully sit for all four exams prior to starting at PricewaterhouseCoopers. However, testing center closures increase stress as a pharmacy pharmacy technician working busy season from October 2020 to February 2021. My two health care issues uh, and the symptoms with them have greatly impacted my study hab efforts. Therefore, I hope you'll consider granting me a six-month six month extension for the BEC portion as a result of these obstacles. Um, then the board had questions based on that. And that was the first, did you miss work due to either of your medical issues? She replied, in November 2020, I was out about a week for the procedure. In March 2021, I was out fully for one week, then spent an additional two to three weeks working half days and taking a day here and there for lingering symptoms. Since I was and still am working from home, it was easy to sign on, check email, do a few things, some being done on my phone while being sick. If being at the client site or office was mandatory, I might have had to apply for short-term disability as the recovery time in March was longer than um, anticipated. Um, then we, there was a question um, on the BEC and when that would expire. I did test for that in January, 2020. There was a six month extension by NASBA for, actually it was the board doing it for Connecticut due to pandemic for all exams that expired from August 1 through September 30th, 2021. The new expiration date is December 30th, 2021. I'm asking for an additional six months as I had other medical issues slowing down my exam process. I believe I am only, I only need until May of 2022 as I am working extremely hard to get all the exams completed to make up for the lost time. I would be open to any additional extension if you or other members of the board would not think six months makes sense, but based on my situation, I hope this clears up any confusion. My concern is that a lot of what she says is because of her hours working and everyone in public accounting has that. Um, that uh, so she was out about a month when was the first exam? Because I think that she's automatically had extra time with these COVID extensions. When does the very first one expire? When did she ask that? The, it would, um, okay, well, with the extension it expires in December of this year. But without the extension, when would it have expired? Um, July of this year. So she is in, in essence was out for a month, but already has five months of of an extension. That's the way I'm thinking of it. Any other thoughts? So what would you, can, go ahead. Uh, 
you know, how long does she want the extension? There's so many dates in there. <laughs> is it, when would her extension be over? I guess that's the best way to say it. The, the one she's asking for or the current one? The one she's asking for. It would be over in May, 2022. So it would be an additional five months, in the, five months in addition to the already five months. Hmm. To me, it didn't it didn't seem to be too lengthy of a request, but she does say in there that she's open to other uh, suggestions, meaning that it's not a um, non-negotiable thing. So I was thinking maybe with other you know, members comments, uh, a lesser extension might be appropriate. Okay. Any, any suggestions? Well, she's asking for May, how about March? Marcia, where were you? Um, I can compromise. Excuse me? I can compromise and, and uh, do the march. <laughs> as, long as, as long as it's clear that it's the medical issue and not the working hours. Yeah, I, I, I hear you on that one. I, I get a little bit of tired of, hey, we had to work busy season. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm always, you know, sensitive to a medical uh, request. So I was going more on that as opposed to the hours with Marsha's point well taken that everyone in public accounting has those hours. So I'll make a motion that we approve the extension to March 31st based on the medical issues. I'll second that. Okay. Do we have a motion and a second? Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. And Frank, why don't you just mention the names of the four and we'll vote to get a motion and get them on the agenda. Okay. The, okay, so again, these are all for continuing education extensions or, or a wait, in one case, a waiver. And it's um, Joseph P. Germain Jr. And do you want me to spell them as Bob? No. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, oh, Germain, oh, G-E-R-M-A-I-N. -G okay. Okay, then the, the next one is Lindsay. That's L I N D is in David S E Y. And her, her first last name, excuse me, is Kendrick, as in Anna Kendrick, K E N D R I C K. Okay. The next is Yun Yue Lin. And so that's Y U N Y U E, all one word, on, all one name. And Lynn, L I N. Okay. And then the last is Paul, and it's uh, Stir Chala, and I'll spell that S T E R C Z A L A. Okay. motion that we add those aforementioned names to the um, agenda to discuss. Second. 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 <laughs> oh, I guess Bob will need one of them. <laughs> we had three at the same time. <laughs> Who wants to take it for Bob's minutes? Go ahead, Sam. All right. <laughs> Sign me up. Okay. Right, we have Tim. a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Not, none opposed. Motion carries and uh, let's start. Okay, the Hope first one is Joseph, Joseph Germain Jr. Busy season. And he is looking to extend um, till, well, 
tomorrow, November 10th, 2021. He wrote that he had credits for he had completed 32 credits, needed needed eight more, and was in these requests through um, good cause. <coughs> And he wrote death of a spouse, sale of residence, moving residence. Um, he did include just his time and expense journal to show the 32 hours, but um, we did ask him for additional information. We have not received that yet. I'll make a motion to approve pending you receive the additional information. I'll second that. All right, motion second on the floor. Any further comments? Um, okay. I have one well, question about that. Is yes. there a time, should we give a time limit for when to get that in? So we, you know, at some, at some point say, hey, you know, you've had your chance. I'll amend my motion, my motion to say by December 31st. Okay. Second I, I said, motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 I don't expect he's going to need uh, that extra incentive, but uh, next. Okay, the next is Lindsay Kendrick. And that is, she's looking for an extension um, as for December 31st, 2021, and for medical reasons. Uh, I had, she writes, I have completed the attached waiver request to allow me to complete the required 40 hours before December 31st, 2021, without being penalized for a fee of 625. I was on maternity leave from August, 2020 through January, 2021 for the birth of my second child. Please see the attached supporting documentation for this leave of absence. And what she, she did, well, she did reply, give us the, her FMLA um, approval request and there, there was a, an attachment that needed a password so I wasn't able to get in to look and see what the um, we just got when did, we, when did this come through well Sunday so we just got it this week um, but she, I mean the, the FMLA was I do I can't say that was through February 1st 2021 was when she returned to work and began on um, looks like August 31st 2020 I'll make uh, to approve Second. A second. <laughs> no. We have a motion and approval and, and a second. Uh, is there any discussion? Okay, hearing none, let me just go to, is, is anyone opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Okay, next this is Yun Yue Lin. And she was looking for an extension to actually just September 30th, 2021 for medical reasons. And she writes, I've been on matern maternity leave since April and due to health reasons, I was not able to complete my requirement by the deadline. I have completed, she wrote this on September 24th. I have completed 34.4 credits before the deadline and the remaining 5.6 credits after the deadline. However, I was informed that by my firm, they will need an extension from Connecticut in order to carry over my credits to the 2021 requirement in the system. Please see attached application for a detailed explanation of my situation and the birth certificate of my child. And she did include the birth certificate. Um, and then the, the additional extension was, um, she went into labor, ended up, um, I guess I can say this, an emergency C-section, had been on, uh, maternity leave since April and recently returned to work, which would have been again around the end of September or before, before she wrote this at the end of September. Um, I needed additional time to recovery due to the surgery, was not able to complete my credits required on the, by the deadline, which again was July 31st this year. I have completed 34.4 credits um, and also the remaining 5.6 after the deadline. However, I was informed I would just need to apply for an extension so that I can carry them over. Um, this is Tim. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the extension. Second. Okay, a motion is second. All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. And the last one is Paul Sturchala. And he um, is looking back for an actual waiver um, for good cause. And he said, due to privacy, treatment records can be released if necessary. Um, and he writes, I'm asking for a waiver for my continuing education credits that are required for my 2022 CPA license renewal. I was registered to attend the AICPA 2020 National and Sophisticated Tax Conference receipt attached. He did have that, where I have obtained, would have obtained 15 plus credits scheduled for, it would have been November of last year, 16 and 17 to 2020. My wife had an awful disease. I, I put that in instead of what it was. She was treated and was thought to be recovered. Unfortunately, the condition came back and she would try, required more treatment due to COVID issues. This is just in general COVID. She was being constantly tested so that an appropriate um, start date could be scheduled for the treatment. With very short notice, I, it was determined that um, would have been no, November 16th and 17th um, last year would have started. And then for um, every six, for the next, every month for the next six months, treated on the same schedule, back to back, uh, back to back days. The COVID protocols and testing, doctor meetings, treatment procedures, and the overall stress made it impossible for me to gain online access to the seminar in question. Please consider the facts relating to this special situation as, my 40, as well as my 40 plus years of timely compliance and grant me a waiver request. Now we did, um, last Wednesday asked for additional documentation. Um, uh, we have not, but we've not received that yet, you know, just showing that, but we, we so that's what we have. Okay, any comments? When have we done waivers before? Hmm. Good question. Right. What additional documentation was requested from him? Um, just showing maybe the medical appointments during the, the time frame. Just so often we just say, you know, just a doctor's note that so and so was truly in in my. Um, you know, I, I was treating um, this person during this time, and, and often they'll even ask you, know, please request, you know, please grant the request that they're asking for. We also asked to clarify if you obtained any CP credits at all during the cycle. Mm -hmm. Um, because we did not get, you know, you just mentioned this 15 plus that he would have gotten, but not that he was, that he, um, earned anything else. Can I have a question? Does the waiver mean it's like, you just don't ever do it? Is that what a means waiver you, means? Right. You don't have to do any of it, take any of it need any of the credits at all the, the, you know no cps at all were, were, would be necessary to renew i know that that's been done in the past years ago for almost always medical reasons um or i think maybe death of family members too but i'm not sure the severity of the medical conditions in the past i don't remember but i know it has been done occasionally The last one I can remember is we did it for the uh, uh, chief accountant of the uh, SEC who had been in an accident and suffered paralysis. And, um, but we make a motion that we send it back to Frank to get the information he's looking for and uh, for Frank to have a discussion about a. Uh, um, an extension instead of a waiver. Yes. So, so yeah, I had the same question. Are we waiving the 16 hours and then he's got other hours or are we waiving the whole thing? He's asking to waive the whole thing. And, he, and it's a good question as to, you know, that was one of our questions to him is how many hours um, do, do you have at all? Because we, we have no information that he has, you know, zero, or he has, he just needed the fifteen, or anything, All right?
Uh, so are we are we suggesting that we table this in lieu? Okay, I think we'll need a motion for that. I'll make a motion that we table this one. Second. Second. Any further comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Oh, okay. I could see no opposed. Okay. Um, finishing with the extension requests, we have case 2019-11. Uh, and I guess at this point, Tim, you can... Uh, we'll exit. You can exit if you wish. Okay. Um, Carol. So, and I'll turn the, uh, the, the, it over to uh, Carla to make the presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Um, well, as I think you can see from the uh, information you were provided, and I hope you had an opportunity to look through it. It's a lot there. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, has a lot of very important issues in it. And uh, we've been working on this. I've been working with Frank and Kat um, <laughs> since 2020. And uh, at, we're getting to the point now where I think we've, we've got to do something as a board. Uh, but uh, my feeling was we've had, there's been innumerable discussions. What we decided to do, uh, the three of us who have been working on it in consultation with John was to give you all some sort of a factual background about what has happened nationally and in some other states just to give you some sort of a feel for what's going on, you know, what sort of the basic issues overall are. Um, I mean, I can certainly go into details in the case. Uh, you have the documents. Uh, I do want to compliment particularly Kat and also Frank for the thorough, diligent way they have gone about this. It is complicated. And obviously what we're dealing with is a nationally, a national firm that does business, I presume in all 50 states. And we did give you a few uh, examples of what some other states have done. Um, I mean, I'm certainly willing to go into detail with the able assistance, particularly of CAT, of what the, um, the facts are that's led up to this, particularly the actions of the SEC and the PCAOB. Uh, but I hope you've all had an opportunity to study that. I do want to interject right at this point that because we have not been able, the three of us uh, working with uh, KPMG to come to some sort of a proposed settlement agreement, uh, there are limits on what we, legal limits on what we can discuss today as a board because technically it is possible we might have to have a hearing uh, if we can't reach a settlement that's agreeable and the hearing officers are going to be all of you. Uh, so uh, because of uh, a combination of procedural law. And also I wanna mention because of the Freedom of Information Act as uh, Bob pointed out earlier. And as you know, we're all, all of this is being recorded. It's gonna be uploaded immediately and accessible to any member of the public, including the firm uh, that we're discussing now. So we do have to be judicious in our comments. 
I felt strongly at this point, you all needed to know something about what was going on because it's, I felt, well, for me, it was a lot to lay on me when I first found out about it. Um, and so what I'd really like to do would be to, uh, with the aid of Kat and Frank, to answer any questions you have, assuming that you've read through the material so that I don't have to, you know, go through the whole thing. So I guess I'll open it up for questions or I, comments. I have a number of questions. This is Marcia. Um, so it sounded like the email that there's a pending settlement. So I guess what is our role if there's already a settlement and um, why would we do a pending settlement before it comes to the board? Um, and we didn't get a copy of that settlement. That, that's my first set of questions. Okay, um, I think that the answer is that I would not, I personally, and I don't think I said this, I wouldn't refer to it as a pending settlement as much as pending uh, ending of negotiations. I mean, my understanding is that we're all, if there was a basic, let me see, I, I have to be very careful about what I say, okay? Um, there have been a number of settlement discussions. Uh, a lot of them uh, in terms of the uh, particulars have occurred between CAD and uh, the uh, authorized representative of KPNG. I did participate in one uh, and um, it, it, the discussions are ongoing. Uh, we just haven't come to closure on what the two parties regard as mutually acceptable. At some point, as there seems to be some sort of, uh, I mean, I think the gist of, of the word settlement is that both parties basically agree that they're going to somehow come to closure, and we're not there yet. But I think there's a lot of desire to try to finish this case off by the end of this calendar year, which only gives us you know, like uh, less than two months. Uh, and that's why um, th any, any settlement would have to be approved by the board, as I understand it. Is that correct, Frank? That is correct, which is also why we've um, put aside uh, November 29th, let's see, is that a Monday, is a potential um, special meeting date for um, such a discussion and, and, and vote and all, yes. Marcia, did, did that answer your question or that question anyway? It answered my first question. Do you remember yes, okay. Um, the other one is the jurisdiction. It looks like we have jurisdiction because there's some in Connecticut and there's 50 plus, I think it said, uh, Connecticut licensees participated in the, the cheating scandal. And should we or could we um, uh, consider action against those those individual licensees for that and um, as well as with the firm. I think that is the gist of the issue in the in the uh, settlement discussions. We there is data available. So the, the with the settlement we might be also dealing with the individual licensees. We, my impression is that we would be at some level. It may, yeah, this is Frank. We it may not necessarily be through the settlement, but we have taken. We have had separate um, investigation into the individuals as well. Those are those are separate from this case, and, and I mean they're obviously tied up in because in some ways. But um, we are taking, you know, we are looking into the, them as well. And have, I mean, that's, right. that's ongoing, it's been ongoing for a while. 
because to be honest, the line personnel, it sounds like we're participating in this as well. And if you can't trust them to take CPE, how do we have trust that they're really looked at the invoice or really checked the, the documentation? I, my thought is that we really need to make a, a pretty firm statement here. That's uh, usually, uh, uh, well, not usually. I say often when something happens, somebody will make a complaint to the uh, society's ethics committee. I don't know whether you're allowed to share, but is there anything in ethics that's moving up on this? Because usually when something happens there, it then gets forwarded to us. Or right, and unfortunately, I, we can't disclose that. Yeah, I, 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 I was thinking the same thing, Marcia, on the, uh, it's, you know, protection of the public and the public trust. And if you're going to cheat on exams to that extent, what are we talking about here? But that might be a, I think that is a separate, uh, that's a, a, a separate from what you're working on now, isn't it, Carla? Kat? I would my, I think I would characterize it as being overlapping. I mean, it's very difficult to uh, separate out the actions of individuals in a particular state from the, some occurrences that have happened at the, with the overarching national firm, particularly in this case. Now, if, if I could ask another question, when I read the materials, it seemed that the, the cheating side of this was also discovered by the firm? or open or? Yes, it was uh, uh, discovered by the firm and self-reported up to the SEC. Thank you. I can keep going with questions if nobody else is going to unmute. All right, I'll keep going. That, um, um, so we talked about, it looked in there like we were going to charge them um, under subsection 10 um, of the statutes. And we have subsection five, which is 20-21 AA5 for dishonesty, fraud, or, or uh, negligence in the practice of public accountancy. Um, that seemed to be an appropriate and uh, charge um, and um, calling it what it is. This is Kat. Um, e yes, there are other charges. Um, it just is part of negotiations. I, right. I don't disagree with you. Uh, it just, it's, you know, that's part of the whole package. Okay. Um, and then it looks like in the statute that we are limited, um, um, I, I saw the huge variations with one of the states doing $451 and one doing yes. $1 million. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like our statutes limit us to, to $50,000. Um, is that correct? If that were to go to hearing, that's per charge. So it depends on the number of charges depends on what you consider an action and, but there's no um, limit on negotiations, negotiated amount. Okay. And do we have any precedents or guidelines um, with similar cases in the past on what we've done as far as monetarily and um, uh, other compliance issues? Not that I'm aware of, but that's where I would look to the board <laughs> for your guidance. You've been here much longer than I have been. Um, Frank, do you know the answer to that question? Um, or do you have any input? I, you know, well, we could look. I know that there was, a, well, it was a, you know, you know there was, it was a large, much larger issue. It was the Arthur Anderson case was, we, we, we could go back and see what we have for that. I mean, that was, 
probably before anything was put into the into our computer system, but uh, we, can see, we we could look we could look and see what's available there. Are you referring to the uh, Colonial Realty? Uh, yes. I just remind everybody that I think those extra questions are are are, are excellent, and I, I hope we we get a few more. Uh, but when all is said and done, uh, I think we're probably going to get a lot of other information about what happened when you know who knew what and when, and and there will be some amelioration, of course, for self reporting, et cetera and systems that that cut things and i don't know the details which um you know details to 11 but just do we keep an open mind and it seems like a lot of a lot of work has been done and a, and a lot of negotiating so i'm assuming that we're probably going to see a a much bigger picture but since there was such so much volume uh you know Kat and Carla thought necessary so that we weren't stumbling through and thinking of these questions later when it really came up. And just the magnitude of the whole thing, uh, you know, I felt like when I first learned about it, gee, that's a lot to lay on somebody. And, and I wanted, we have to be very careful right now as a board in this discussion, because uh, since nothing settled or discussion about uh, what the final settlement might look like, uh, it's possible, legally possible, we could become a hearing board and we have to be unprejudiced and dispassionate. So we don't want anything in this conversation to indicate we would be otherwise than that. Very good. Anyone else? I know it made wonderful evening meeting, reading. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you for everybody. And uh, final opportunity for comments or concerns of uh, any person present today, we'll, we'll call it the, uh, the Bonnie Stewart section since. <laughs> um, I would like to give you just a brief update about peer review. We continue to run the Connecticut peer review, um, you know, we're the administrating entity for it, but AICPA has uh, continuously issued uh, new exposure drafts that are resulting in fewer and fewer people doing audits. And we've seen that um, significantly over the last couple of years, the number of firms in Connecticut that are doing audits participating in peer review has significantly dropped. And with the exposure draft that closed at the end of August regarding quality, um, and the need to have additional people review firms audits, um, we are anticipating that a significant uh, number of additional firms will drop out. We're already hearing from people mm -hmm. and having people withdraw from peer review. And that's not just Connecticut, that's nationwide. So the fewer people that are in the <laughs> program, the less sustainable the program will be in Connecticut. Currently, we have as our backup uh, the Coastal Peer Review Program, which is run by people formerly with North Carolina and Maryland. Um, and our peer review committee met last week and had a lengthy conversation about um, what should we do? How should we do it? You know, do we modify what we're doing currently? And the answer is no. Right now, we're going to keep right down the course we've been on. Um, but I'm raising this with you because once we know what's going to happen with the what the final version of those quality standards is going to look like, um, it it um, it may result in changes in Connecticut. Not overnight. Uh, we've been speaking with Massachusetts as well, who's seen a steady decline. Again, every state has, um, and we're making sure that uh, whatever we're doing is both helping those individuals that do audits as well as ensuring that they're being done properly. 
Uh, but I just want to give you a heads up that there's a lot happening in this world. And I expect that we will see, um, we'll continue to see a decline in the number of firms that do audits. And um, in the end, uh, we may not be the administrating entity for Connecticut, uh, but we are looking to try to come up with a New England solution um, or something that's at least in the Northeast region if possible. Again, no changes this year. This is just a heads up that these conversations are taking place, that we're reaching out to other organizations and that uh, our peer review committee is taking this seriously to make sure that we end up where we need to both for um, the public, the individuals doing the audits um, and for uh, the society as well. Thank you. Uh, just, just out of curiosity, roughly how many uh, firms uh, are we talking about in Connecticut that are we're down to? We've declined by, I believe, roughly 200 in the last four years alone. So where are we at now? Um, I believe we have around 450 companies currently, or firms currently participating. We expect to see that drop further uh, when these regulations become final. Now, what the regs are gonna be in the end, we're not quite sure because a lot of firms throughout the country did write in uh, smaller firms and say, if you move forward with this, we will you know, put us out of business. And at the AICPA council meeting in October, Susan Coffey, who's now the president of public practice for the AICPA, did indicate that they will, um, that they heard, the ASB said that they heard the complaints or concerns and it's not their intent to put small businesses out of, or these smaller firms out of business. Um, and they will look to see whether there's any acceptable alternatives. But what that means, nobody, nobody knows. And the firms as a whole, I would tell you, the smaller firms really feel that they've got a target on their back. So um, how this ends up, have no clue, but um, we do know that that the smaller firms are already having difficulty with the current standards and these new standards, regardless of what form they're in, will just make it that much more difficult. They're international standards. You know, they're trying to have one set uh, that works through regardless of where you are. And we understand their intent, um, but it, uh, it's extremely difficult for, for smaller firms, extremely difficult. Reminds me of the old saying that the best is the enemy of good enough. Yeah. That you could you could tighten the screws so badly that you'll just basically lose everything. <laughs> That's one of the concerns is that where there's already um, people are already finding it difficult. Small businesses are already finding it difficult and to to find people to do their their audits. Audit prices are going up because of the cost of doing the audits is, is, is going up. Um, it is, you know, like a, what's it, the dog chasing the tail. It just, it keeps on going round and round. And uh, at, at this point, at this point, people are becoming incredibly frustrated. Um, so we're just, unfortunately at this point, we commented on the regs too, but it's not only a question of, um, are there, are there enough reviewers for peer review? Are there enough auditors for the people that are the firms that businesses that need audits done? And if you have a lot more drop out, um, it's just gonna make an already tight market that much tighter. And if you look at the big auditing scandals, they're never anything exotic like Wirecard, they weren't confirming the cash. <laughs> right. So, uh, Again, we, we continue to monitor everything that's coming out. Um, and, and I will tell you that the peer review board, the AICPA peer review board, which I serve on, is very aware of the concerns that are out there. Um, and they also submitted comments to the ASB. We just don't know, um, we just don't know what's gonna happen in the end. The Good news is regardless of what does happen, they don't go into effect immediately. So people do have time to reconfigure if that's a possibility for their firm, um, possibly partner up with others to help with the independent sections of these standards. Um, again, it won't take care of all the problems, but 
I do believe that given the amount of attention these latest standards have or latest proposed standards have received, that there are a number of efforts underway to try to, I'm going to say minimize the damage. And they're intended to improve audit quality, um, but there is, again, a, um, a downside to it, as you referenced, um, John. So. Oh, anybody wish any comments or requests for follow up? I guess if not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, Frank. Just, yeah, quickly. I, um, we, we've received quite, um, this question both from a licensee here and from NASBA about whether or not it's um, permissible to carry over the um, a test um, credits. If you'd say you, you, the law requires anybody who does a test to also to, to then as part of their CPEs get eight hours of a, of a, in, a, in a test, the area of a test. And so the question is say someone does 10 hours one year and then six the next, could they carry over the other two? I mean, Kat and I looked at the regulations and those don't appear to say one way of, or the other. I guess the policy has been and it predated, must have predated us as I don't remember this discussion to not allow that. But I, Kat and I asked, thought we might just bring this to the board and see if it makes sense to keep doing that or what, what the reason was. I'm, you know, I'm a believer in Chesterton's fence. You don't get rid of something until you know why it was there in the first place. So I just thought I would ask that. way to track that if if we had to carry it over if if that didn't carry over well then people would if then let's say they let's say they had the you know up to 20 hours of carryover but only but didn't have enough you know, so had only the six a test um then they would they would still they would that means they would not um have completed everything they needed to complete on time and so they would have to take the extra hours and then they would be late by whatever the time was that they finished the attest credits. So they did 10 one year, they did six the next, but they were not allowing them to carry over the two. So they're gonna have to take two more hours of a test. And depending on when they're done, they would either have to pay the late fee, you know, for getting it for not getting it done by September or until September or you know the larger one by not getting it done until December 31st. So that that would be part of it. Um, I don't remember ever discussing it and and but I, I may not have remembered just because all of my CPE was usually in a test that uh, but maybe Danny can remember something. Yeah I don't remember it coming up before. Hmm. No, this is the first time hearing about it, hearing about this situation. Yeah. It almost seems like a why not, but I think probably. I did, just did look up Chesterton's fence. It's apropos. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need an answer today or um, are you just bringing it up? Well, there is someone who is trying to renew and needs to know whether or not he needs to get additional tests. I mean, we, there's you know, some time we could leave, you know, if we, we, I guess certainly before the next, you know, the, 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 the I guess there's, if, as long as we do have that meeting in, at the end of the, of this month, maybe we could put it, make that another one of the items. You know, hopefully it wouldn't take too long. Um, you know, that way, at least we come before the renewal period, during the renewal period mm -hmm. before it closes at the end of December. That sounds like a good time. In the meantime, tell them to get the two bloody extra hours. <laughs> well, I think that is his attend. He just would yeah. prefer not to have to pay the leap. But it's an interesting. It is, it is interesting. Okay. Okay. Now we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Oh, Martha's gonna make the motion, but she's muted. So she'll make the motion, I'll second. 
No, I wasn't. I'm sorry. Oh. I, it wasn't a motion to adjourn. I wanted to ask a question about the oh. 20. Um, the meeting. Um, what what are the expectations for that meeting in terms of length and, and what we're supposed to be doing? I think the main purpose would be to discuss um, any settlement or uh, on the um, case that we, we just talked about. Um, so I don't know how long that would take, and then yeah, we wouldn't probably you know I, I try not to load it up with too much extras. I mean, I guess th this one I would hope so. The test question, hopefully, we could put that on, but we try not to load it up with, with too too many other things. The main purpose would be to discuss any settlement on this. Uh, you know, because we're, we're hopeful that we can get something done by then. Presumably, we'd have something on the table to right, exactly, right. Review and agree with and approve or or not. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I I'm sorry to uh, interrupt yeah. the motion to adjourn, but okay. I, I just want to, try to clarify that. And and it would be at ten o'clock then. Bob, is that right? Is that when we have that? We work with Bob to get a time and date. You know, he does have the 29th available. I usually, I think it is 10, but I, I just was trying to get him to confirm that because he's the one what who, the who, notes who go out? had to book the time. The problem, the issue we run into is that there's only one, you know, DCP just has the one um, Zoom license that would allow longer meetings with multiple people. And so you just have, and there are a bunch of boards in different areas that, had, that would use it. So that was one of the days that was available. You're, you're muted, Bob. Sorry. I believe that it is at 10. I'm, I'm on the Zoom platform now, so I can't swing over to the, the meeting schedule, but it's at, I believe it's at 10. I'll confirm that by email. Okay, thank you. We had limited slots, like Frank said. Uh, so that was really the only one I could get to, you know, to fit this in. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Okay, any further questions, items, new business? I make a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, no discussion allowed on that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. And we'll see you all on the 29th. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody.